Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Female Financial Freedom Online event. So happy to have you all here. We, uh, we have Michaela here so far, and um, obviously Phoebe and uh, Leanne, and we had 12 registrants, so we will be uh, recording it because a couple of people were unable to attend. So anybody who is new to uh, my world, because I know Phoebe was also um, promoting this uh, event as well, I am Michelle Bloom. I am the part owner of Essential Planner, which is a holistic financial planning firm, uh, as well as director of Time to Bloom Coaching, which is a money makeover uh, coaching brand. So I'm Michelle Bloom, the money mentor. And to tell you a little bit about myself and uh, why I started the Female Financial uh, Freedom Group, um, I had been in financial services for about uh, eight years. And then about two years into that, uh, I had a very unexpected and unwanted divorce, which left me both broke and broken. I was previously a seven-figure business owner um, and a homeowner as a single parent and then lost the whole damn lot. And my mission and passion is now to help other women who have perhaps been in a similar situation to rebuild their life and create financial security for themselves, as well as to um break through the glass income ceiling and create that financial security for themselves and i do that um, with the three pillars of financial freedom and i have a pdf and a masterclass if anybody would like that and basically what i teach uh, with my clients is pillar one is money mindset mastery and the reason that that is so important to get rid of those limiting beliefs and to create a new money story is our old stories can stop us from busting through that glass income ceiling. And if we don't address and create that new money story, then pillars two and three won't be followed through. You'll keep going up, hitting the glass ceiling, up, hitting that glass ceiling over and over again, because what you're trying to create doesn't match your identity of who you see yourself as a business owner and deserving of wealth. Pillar two is busting through the glass income ceiling, learning how to charge your worth and how to, uh, again, write that new money story and create a new identity for yourself that matches that. And we also do lots of money games and tracking uh, and all that sort of stuff to and pricing and marketing using the sacred money archetypes and the marketing archetypes as well. And then pillar three is the practical money management site. And that is things like um, budgeting, uh, financial planning to create uh, financial freedom for yourself long term. And that is extremely important because divorced single women are the fastest demographic of homelessness in this country. And they are two thirds more likely to experience poverty in their retirement years. So I want to do everything I can to actually prevent that from happening. So we look at money tools and budgeting and all sorts of other stuff to manage your money now and to create wealth both for retirement um, and outside super for now as well. Hi, Sally. Welcome. Okay. So Phoebe is the cash flow pocket rocket. And Phoebe and I met through a 12-month business mastermind. And uh, I absolutely love what Phoebe does. She's a award-winning uh, accountant. And her story started when she was uh, a part owner at uh, age 29, was it, I think, working for her dad's boutique accountancy firm. And like many businesses, had growing pains. And she was able to then uh, turn that business around uh, and double it and sell it for a lovely huge profit. And now her mission, I will let her explain about that, but it is something that we all really, really need. Um, I experienced that firsthand with the business with um, the ex-husband. We went from startup to 1.2 million within 14 months, but revenue doesn't equal profit. And uh, yeah, that, <laughs> so we all got into business to make money, not just about how many sales we make. So I'm really keen um, to learn more about that. So I'll hand over to you, Phoebe. Just thank um, you, Michelle. Wonderful. Thank you for the lovely introduction. So, hi, Ren. I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. I've got my PowerPoint presentation. Um, and then slideshow. So can everyone see, Michelle, you can see my screen okay now? I can, yeah. 
Fantastic. Hi everyone, so good morning. I'm so excited to be here in Michelle's group um, and presenting to you all. And today I want to talk about booming your profit with passion and purpose, because it's all good and well to have a passion and, you know, if you're what you're doing and the gifts you want to share with the world. But if you're not actually making any profit um, and there's no cash in the bank, then I like to say that you've got a very expensive hobby. However, on the flip side of that is that without passion and purpose, the money doesn't mean anything either. So I think combining the two and bringing the two together and having knowledge and understanding of what your passion and purpose is and how you can actually turn that into a profit is really key for your business and future success. So I'm really passionate about this topic and I love numbers. I'm a bit of a numbers nerd. Uh, I don't know if anyone else on the call is, if you're a numbers nerd like me, but I really love um love really breaking everything down into numbers because numbers never lie. And I find that once you understand the numbers behind your business, often it's like a light switch is flicked on and all of a sudden you can see everything clearly. But before that, it can be a bit hazy and, and even comes back like the numbers behind the numbers is often something I, I talk about as well, which is really important to understand that your numbers behind the numbers. Now, Michelle, we've said that anyone can ask questions. So if you do have a question throughout the presentation, just go to the bottom of your screen and, and click the reaction and it will put, you can select the hand up um, little image and then it'll come up on your screen and then Leanne or myself will see that and um, you can jump in and ask a question. Don't hold it to the end in case you're going to forget um, and I'm more than happy. I'm kind of, you know, love doing these presentations where they're a bit more free and easy going and I do have a slide presentation but I do like it when it's a bit more, um, you know, everyone gets to do what they want. So I better... I don't have a clicker here. So thank you, everyone, for being here on a Friday. I don't Whether you're in Queensland, it's 11 a.m. in the morning. Whether you're in some other part of the country, it could be 12 noon. So I'm really grateful that you have decided to show up here today, commit an hour of your time to being with us, Michelle and I and Leanne, and learning to grow your business effectively and getting more clarity around your numbers. So I really appreciate the fact that I know you could probably be doing lots of different things in your business right now. So the fact that you've shown up here and actually investing in yourself, I'm really grateful that you're doing that and you're investing your time with me as well. Okay, so why are you here? I'd love for you to just to even pop in the chat right now. What made you want to come along today, today's presentation? Because this will really help me to make sure that I answer any questions that have come up or, you know, really what you're what you'd like to get out of today's session. So if you want to just pop in the chat, why you actually decided to show up today and take the time out um, of your busy day, I'm sure on a Friday, you probably could be going out with the girls for a nice business lunch on a Friday or networking. So just pop in the chat um, why you actually decided to come along. And as you do that, I'll just share a little bit about myself. So Michelle did give you a little bit of information, um, but I am a mum. So you can see my little girl, Georgia. She's actually four now, so a bit bigger and a bit older than um, she's in those photos. Um, and then up in the top, I guess I'm looking at my top right, but it might be your top left. I'm not sure, but that's my husband. I have him in my phone as my very proud husband. I like to remind myself that he's proud of me. He is a government employee. So sometimes he doesn't quite understand the employee, uh, sorry, the entrepreneurial mindset and the risk taking and all the things that goes into growing your business. So I just like to remind myself every time it pops up on my phone, I'm like, yes, he is proud of me and what I'm doing and, and the late nights and everything else I'm doing to put into my business because I am very passionate about it. And then I've also got a photo of my dad. So dad and I, as Michelle mentioned, had an accounting firm together for... Well, I, was, I started working for him when I was at uni and then became a partner when I was 29. And then we sold it about six, seven years later. So it's probably about eight years ago now that we actually sold the firm. My mum and dad are actually still together to this day. So I didn't include mum in this photo because she wasn't really in the business at that stage of the story that kind of really shaped who I am today and, and what I'm sharing with the world and my passion and my gifts. So dad and I, um, when, when, I went overseas for a little bit of after my uni and came back. Dad had invested in some coaches that specialized in accounting firms and helping accountants to really grow their business, um, implement strategies and systems, kind of improve profit, cash flow, um, new client acquisition, all the things that, you know, you think accountants would know, but, you know, you go to uni like anyone else, you kind of go to uni, learn your trade, and then you get out and you're working and running an accounting firm. And it's a much different mindset from actually being the technician in the business to 
actually being off the tools, as I like to call it, and being that business owner, that entrepreneur who has that entrepreneurial mindset, that leadership, um, delegation, implementing systems, so all those different things um, that you need to kind of step up and learn. And you do touch on business, of course, at university when I was doing my degree, but not to the extent that it takes to actually become that business owner. Um, and that's what I find often for small businesses. And for me personally at the time, it was really challenging to kind of step up to be that business owner. So we've invested in coaches. Fast forward a couple of years, they were also based on the Gold Coast and they wanted to invest in a small boutique accounting firm um, so they could kind of have us as their flagship firm, um, do all the strategies that they wanted to implement and then I guess use us to kind of as a, you know, to I guess market to other accountants saying, you know, what we do with MJ accountants, blah, blah, blah. And it all sounded amazing. These two guys could sell ice to Eskimos and my dad and I jumped right on in and decided yes it was a good idea so at that time I bought a share of the business and these two guys bought a share of the business and they became the major shareholders and they borrowed the money for their purchase and my purchase against the business so literally overnight once we signed that contract our business went into over half a million dollars worth of debt and we now were in bed with two guys that we hardly even knew um, and, you know, you wouldn't marry someone that you just had a first date with normally. Um, and we had jumped into bed with these two guys, which we barely knew. And it was probably at the time, the hardest lesson, the hardest experience that I've ever been through in my life. But now coming out the other side and now having my own business, it's probably been the biggest gift because it's given me the strength and the knowledge and the purpose and the passion for what I do now. And that's to really help business owners to really understand business, to step up to be that business leader, to know, to kind of learn how to implement systems, to delegate, to become that leader, understanding your finances and really learning that business skills that are then going to help you to create that business that you really dream of. So probably one of the hardest lessons. And as they say, you grow through the hardest things as you go through the fire, it either kills you or makes you stronger. And thankfully, I came out the other end stronger. And I was through that whole process able to really grow my knowledge, become that business leader, double my firm in, um, in just a couple of years. And then that enabled us to sell it for a really good profit. So we did actually exit the partnership um, not too long after we actually got into it, but it cost us a lot of money. So not an experience that I would go back and repeat. And definitely, um, if you're ever looking at going into business with someone else, make sure you go and see a lawyer and get everything, all your dot, I's dotted and your T's crossed, because that's something we did not do. A lesson learned. So I'm just going to have a look at the chat here and see. Uh, so Michelle, learning more about creating better profit margins. Awesome. I love that. Selena, hoping to link some profit to my passion. Fantastic. It's really great to have some profit in there. Turning my passions into passive income to gain more financial education. Fantastic, Michaela. Thank you for being here. And Sally, learning more and getting more comfortable talking about money and pricing. I often discount my prices because I'm afraid to say no or to say the right price. I love that, Sally. And thank you so much for your honesty because honestly, in business, pricing is probably one of the most challenging aspects of business and is it can often be a really big mindset thing. I've actually done a couple of podcasts on this. So if you want to listen to that as well, all around pricing, it's called the Profit to Cash podcast. You can find it on Spotify or Apple podcasts. And I've done lots of different podcasts around that exact um, topic there around pricing because it really is so important to your business because without um, the right prices, I always like to say that the lowest prices, low prices are probably one of the quickest ways to go out of business. Number one, your clients aren't loyal to you. So if they find a cheaper price, they're going to jump ship as soon as they can. Um, two, you just don't have the profit margins in there to really help you to build that profitable business. And if your customers do love you, at the end of the day, they really want you to be profitable because they want you to be here long term because they want to keep using your services. So if you're not making a profit in, and you have to close the doors, a lot of your customers will be really disappointed um, if you haven't priced your services properly. So listen to the podcast. But if you've got any questions around that, definitely um, I'm more than happy to have a chat around that. So my purpose is to guide business owners to create a wildly successful business that is aligned to their passion and purpose with profit, cash and confidence so they can live the life of their dreams. And purpose, um, I'm going to get into my dog. I won't talk about it. So how to create a profitable and cash rich business with confidence. So for me, there's six pillars. One is passion and purpose. Two is understanding your freedom number. And this is a key step that often small business owners forget to do and 
often I say you should do it at the very beginning of your business. And if you haven't done it yet, then definitely you want to do that process. Number three is from your freedom number, creating your income schedule. Then out of that, developing your profit plan, aka your budget. And then the three R's and the magic is in the three R's. And I'll touch on that. And then finally, confidence. So confidence was absolutely key in my business. When we uh, became partners with those two other guys, I lacked so much confidence. I was really insecure. I didn't know any, felt like I didn't know anything. And I really felt like I needed these two guys to help me grow my business. Um, and it was through me actually doing a lot of work on my personal development and self-confidence and becoming a better leader. That was one of the keys that helped me to transform that business and to create it, create it into what it was um, that enabled me to sell it. Okay, so passion and purpose. So if you've got a notepad and pen there, I've got some questions coming up. So what does passion and purpose mean to you? So let me give you a quick story here. And I know I've only got an hour, so you're going to have to keep me on time, Michelle. Um, so this past month, I was sharing with Michelle, and hopefully there's none of my clients on this call just at the moment, because I haven't quite told the news to everyone yet. Um, but my husband got offered a job in Canada, Vancouver, about a month ago, actually. And he really wants to go traveling. He wants a bit more adventure in his life. He's a bit of a traveler. And so we had a bit of a discussion. Initially, I did not want to go, I must admit. I was like, no, it's not, you know, my business is just growing. I'm just starting to get established here in Australia. People are starting to know who I am. I'm getting referrals. You know, everything's starting to fall into place and to kind of uproot my whole life and my business um, to and start again in Vancouver. I was like, no, I don't want a part of it. Um, but then I was actually listening to the four-hour work week um, with Tim Ferriss, I think it is. And he talked about how his business was um, kind of like killing him basically he was working really long hours and he actually decided to uproot his life and go traveling and he realized that, that was the only way he was going to be able to implement the systems and the strategies in his business so that it would actually give him the life that he wanted rather than the flip side so I was like okay Dan after listening to that I'm like let's do it let's go to Canada and after saying yes then all this doubt crept in and I really started to lose my passion and purpose for what I was doing and I went into a real funk and I've just started to come out of it, to be honest with you. And I was on the call with one of my coaches the other day. And she said, Phoebe, what I'm hearing is you're ready to basically throw in the towel and walk away. And she said, if you do that, if that's really what you want to do, then I will respect you. I'll back you 100%. And I will, you know, whatever you want to do, I'll be there to support you. However, I know you've got a real passion and purpose for what you want to do. And I want you to dig deep and really clarify that and really, really tap into what that passion and purpose is and put clarity and definition around that and really start embodying it. And when I started to do that and become really clear and I started to see visions of what I could envision for myself and my business in the future, all of a sudden my passion and purpose came back. And I was like, hell no, I'm not giving up this business. I'm not walking away and throwing everything I've done for the past two and a half years down the toilet um, to go kind of get back and go get a, the secure job. I'm really going to tap into what it is for me. I'm going to every morning do my desires, really feel my passion and purpose. And that's what helps keeping you going. So when you have those moments where the customers aren't flowing into you or things seem really challenging, you don't want to get out of bed. It's your passion and purpose for what you're doing that is going to get you out of bed, that's going to get you to keep going, showing up on social media, showing up at social networking events, showing up at customer meetings and keep putting your heart on your sleeve and getting out there. And that's what I think that passion and purpose is. It's like that fire in your belly that no matter what happens is going to keep you going. So I'd love to know, you answer these questions. You can either put it in the chat or there's one more Sorry, I should have, you're welcome, Sally. So, um, yeah, so there's a few questions here. So I'd love you to write down all the things you love to do. So what energizes you and what lights you up inside? And what are the things that you would do regardless of money? So if you won the lotto tomorrow, so say you won $5 million tomorrow, you could clear all your debt, buy your dream house, go on a holiday, put money in the bank with Michelle or invest in invest with Michelle and create a passive income for you that was going to pay you for the rest of your life and you didn't need to worry about working anymore or doing the hard yards, what is it that you would still do regardless of knowing that you're financially secure, you're financially independent? What would keep you going in that case? So just write down a few of those things and hopefully they link to your business. Um, and then what is one thing about your business that lights you up? And how can you connect this to your this passion to your business passion and purpose? 
And who on the line here has um, kids? I've got a four-year-old, as I mentioned. She asks me why a hundred times a day. So I want you to go deeper with this. So if you said that your passion is to have connection with other business women, why? Why is that so important to you? If your passion is like Michelle's helping women who have been through divorce to really get their money mindset in place, to help them to grow their finances so that they can be financially independent and don't have to rely on a partner. Why is it that that's Michelle's absolute passion and purpose and really dig deep to that cause of what it is. So I'd love for you to kind of write down, I'll give you a moment now and keep talking, but if you want to put it in the chat as well, and um, Michelle is recording this, so you can go back and watch this and do this process again, but it's really important to clarify your purpose. And when you get clear on your passion, your purpose, that's what could also help you to create your products or your services. So maybe you're really passionate about um, having organization in your life. And that's something you absolutely love. Like you're really good at organization. You, when someone opens your kitchen cupboard, they're just blown away by how beautiful it looks, that everything's in its own container, everything's organized. You've got your checklists everywhere. You've got your kids organized. Like maybe that's your absolute passion. So I had a friend last year who um, was working. She was a single mum, and her passion was exactly that organization decluttering. And she just took the leap last year, jumped into the entrepreneurial world and has now got her own business called decluttering by Kel. And she does decluttering and cleaning for people. And she's fully booked within one year. She's so booked out. She can't, she actually is trying to find staff members and she's that busy. So that was her turning her passion into a profitable business. So I'd love to hear that. So Sally, I'm passionate about helping growing small, medium business with HR, business and leadership solutions. I love that because businesses need leadership so much and HR, like it's such a quagmire, isn't it, Sally? You know, HR world, like I, as an accountant, I would always recommend my clients go and see a really good HR expert because it can cost, it might cost you a little bit of money up front, but it can save you and your ass thousands and thousands of dollars. So I love that. We also love to help corporate leaders and business owners to grow themselves and their people. I love that. Um, Small business often think HR is just, yeah, exactly. They do until they get a, an employee that's disgruntled or a subcontractor even that's disgruntled and all of a sudden they're, they're confronted with a huge um, issue and that they didn't ever really want to deal with, I'd probably suspect. Michelle, you love coaching female business owners so they don't have to rely on a partner or be stuck in an unhappy relation due to financial lack. I love that too. You know, we're all here to share our gifts and we've got so much to offer um, other people and businesses and people just to have the best life possible. So I love that, Michelle. So anyone else wanting to share, feel free to jump into the, the chat. Okay, so my second step here is to create your freedom number. So often I would have clients coming to me and they're all excited. They've got their passion and their purpose and they're going to start their new business and they've been designing it. They've been talking to friends. Uh, you know, they're getting some ideas, looking, doing some research but one thing they often forget to do is like they might have been working as an employee up until this stage and now all of a sudden they're jumping out into the entrepreneurial world and they never really thought about the fact that they're no longer going to have that income coming in from their job um, and they didn't really calculate what their business needs to earn to actually make them live or give them that freedom that they want. So a lot of business, you know, go often people go into business for freedom, for time um, and for money. Um, but they often forget this one key step because when you go into business, all of your sales doesn't necessarily relate and drop down into your bank account as your income. So this is kind of working backwards to really help you clarify what your sales need to be to give you that income that you truly desire. Ah, I love that, Sally. And winging it, you know what? I think Richard Branson, he winged it and look at the amazing... Um, business he's created so definitely winging it sometimes having that lack of fear and that lack of knowledge can actually be an advantage because you just can be so nimble and you can just do things and be like you know what I'm just putting it all in I've got a passion I'm going for this so oops, I'm trying to get my screen so understanding your freedom number so your freedom number I said is when you get really clear on this it's like all the pieces of your business can fall into place so all of a sudden you get clear on what your sales targets are. And this gives you like the numbers behind the numbers. 
Um, your business income goals are aligned to your personal income goals, and you can really clarify what you want your business profit to be. And um, when you don't know your freedom number, you've really got no clarity in what your sales targets are that you're trying to achieve every month. Your business isn't able to pay you the desired income that you desire, that you know can cover everything. And often there's no profitability in your business because you're kind of just running like on this hamster wheel, just getting things done, putting out fires, paying money here, paying the money there. It's like when you go into that launch stage of your business and kind of money's flying out here, there and everywhere. And without having this clarity around what you really want the business to be and what you want it to earn, often you'll invest in things that maybe you shouldn't have invested in or actually aren't beneficial for your business because you've got nothing to kind of compare it with or to, to analyze it against. So the freedom number helps you to get really clear on that. So to calculate your freedom number, so there's three key um, numbers that you really need to look at with your freedom number. And you don't want to forget any one of these because these are really important to make sure that you're getting, you know, you are getting out of the business what you want, not the business dictating to you um, the life you should live, but you actually dictating to the business what you want. So first of all, doing a personal budget. And I always, and I do have a worksheet um, that anyone can get on this. I've got either the freedom number calculator or the profit calculator. They're all on my website. So you can go along there and grab them for free. And there's also a little video that goes through how to actually do the process. This, and it's an Excel spreadsheet, so it should be quite easy um, with the video to kind of work it out. So first of all, you do a personal budget. So go through and work out exactly what you're spending on a monthly basis. This is so things like um, your mortgage repayments or rent. Uh, you know, if you like having your hair done once a month, what that is, you know, new clothes and shoes, whether you've got children, pets, groceries and do different insurances. I actually use zero for my personal as well as for my business, completely separate, of course. Um, but I do a profit and loss for my family and show my husband's not really that interested, but I get really excited about it and I love seeing the trends and everything. So I can clearly get our personal budget out of there. Um, but if you don't, when you look at this freedom number or the profit calculator, it's actually my zero um, personal expenses. So I've kind of got a really detailed list of all the different things that possibly could come in there that you might forget if you um, are just doing it um, off the top of your head. So I've got things like Netflix subscription, Spotify subscription, coffees and meals. It's probably where we spend a bit of money on coffee each week. Uh, you know, those little things that you want. And what you can do as well, because it's a spreadsheet, um, an Excel spreadsheet, is you can do one column that is like um, your bare basics that you need to live every single month. And then you can do more of an aspirational one. So if you dream on going on an overseas holiday every year, you could put in a budget for what you should be saving for that overseas holiday. Or if you're wanting to start investing with Michelle and starting to set up your financial freedom outside of your business, you could put a, an amount in there for your future financial freedom outside of your business as well. So, you know, if that's a hundred dollars a month to get started with, and then you can talk to Michelle and kind of she can help you with that investment strategy. Um, then you wanted to, second thing you need to do is calculate your business expenses. Um, and once again, I'm using my own profit and loss as the categories in there for you. So hopefully they're all detailed. Um, but once again, it's an Excel spreadsheet. So just add in any lines that are different to you or delete anything that's not relevant to you and your business um, and put in, you know, and it's all on a monthly basis. So if you do pay, for example, your business insurance um, on an annual basis, just divide it by 12 and put the um, monthly cost in there. And then there's a calculation at the bottom for tax. So I assume, especially when you're getting started, you want to have at least 20% put aside for tax. And even if at the end of the year, you don't have to pay 20% in tax, it's just like for savings. So it's like kind of helping you to build that cash cushion in your business. Um, but as your business is growing and becoming more profitable, really important to make sure that you adjust that tax percentage in line with your business and profitability. So if you um, are not sure, the ATO tax office website has some really good calculators that you can calculate on or your accountant would be able to do that for you as well. But just being sure that you do um, calculate what your tax liability estimate as accurately as possible because um, you definitely don't want to get to the end of the year and all of a sudden be confronted with this big tax bill um, that you don't have any money set aside for. And often when I had the tax compliance firm, tax liability and BAS liability, GST, all that type of thing was one of the biggest cash flow impacts on businesses, was one of the biggest um, 
cash flow burdens because people don't plan for it, especially if you've been an employee and you're used to your employer deducting tax from your wages every week. Um, also, when you're in business, you don't have anyone deducting taxes. So you're responsible to making sure you take out taxes. And unfortunately, tax isn't our money. It's the government's. Um, but as I mentioned, my husband is a government employee. So I always like to say that you should be celebrating paying tax because number one, it means you've got a profitable business. Number two, you're supporting hundreds of thousands of lives all throughout Australia because the government is one of the biggest employers in the country. Plus, not only do they employ employees directly, but they also employ a lot of um, contractors. So a lot of businesses actually work with government and then contract to government. Um, so, you know, just really thinking about all. And also when we live in Australia, we've got so many beautiful parklands we can enjoy. My husband actually works for a Queensland Government Authority that is responsible for the Spit Master Plan. So if you're on the Gold Coast and you've been up to the Spit lately, the, they just won a national award for, uh, what was it, an engineering, like landscape engineering, a landscape architect, sorry, design award. So the Spit, my husband's project and the, the consultant that they engaged just won a national award for that um, redesign of the Spit Master Plan. So if you haven't been up there, go and have a look and just know that that's you're supporting your family there. You're supporting um, the creation of beautiful parklands by paying your tax. I always say pay your tax with gratitude and be really celebrating it. So I just kind of, yeah, I like to throw that in there just so you kind of flip people's thinking because when I was a tax compliance accountant, all I heard was people complaining about tax. <laughs> and so I like to flip the thinking around there and just get people really excited. So once again, as I said, there is a calculator on my website. I'm not sure if Michelle will share that, um, but just jump over to my website, phoebedray.com forward slash resources, and you can download these tools from there. Okay, so we won't go through the exercise today, but you can go through that if you do it. And thanks, Sally. And if you do it and you're not sure, just flick me an email. Um, I love getting emails from people so I can go through that with you. Okay, so once you've got your freedom number calculated, that basically is working backwards to what income goals you want to achieve for the month. So your freedom number is really that income goal that you want to achieve on a monthly basis. And once you do that, you know that you can, it's like your freedom, you can sit back, breathe easy, you know that um, your business is sustaining not only the business, but also tax and your lifestyle that you want to achieve. So that's why the freedom number is so important. And then out of that falls your income schedule. Okay, so your income schedule reviews your business income and, uh, sorry, products and services and the income streams that you generate from those. So you might be a business has both. So for example, Michelle, she's got her coaching business. So she might have some digital products um, that she's created that people just buy from her website that might be a money mindset, um, you know, program or, um, you know, she's got the products that she sells when she does her financial planning that she earns an income from that ongoing or she also has her coaching business. So she offers, also offers a service because she has her money mindset coaching business. And also with the financial planning, people pay for the service of having her develop and create that um, financial plan for them as well. So your business might have both. Um, you know, like if you're a tradesman, for example, you've got often a markup on the materials that you use to create the, if you're a plumber, for example, you might have a markup on the toilet, but then you'd also charge your fees as well. Or you might purely be product or you might purely be a service-based business. Um, but the income schedule, basically, you list down all the different types of income you have um, from all the different products or services and look at what you expect to earn, what the prices are and what you expect to earn from those, um, you know, on that monthly basis to hit that freedom number. Also with income, like when you kind of really sit back and look at your income schedule and start creating it, you really wanted to start looking at seeing whether you can create some products or services that enable you to scale and leverage your business so that you can stop exchanging time for money. So, for example, if you're a service-based provider, it, you know, to scale your business, it might be that you either create some digital products that people can buy. You might create merchandise or books or something, um, but you'd also have employees. So you create systems and, and structure. So you might have employees to help you create that scalability in the business. If you're purely product-based business, then, you know, making sure your systems and everything are in place so that you can scale that business and grow um, with, once again, with team members and systems. So really wanting to think about your income schedule and thinking about the big picture and how you can grow your business and your future income, not just from you exchanging time for money. So at the moment, a lot of what I do personally is still exchanging time for money, um, but I am still working and kind of coming up with ideas to create products and things that's all 
you know, that I don't have to exchange as much time for money. So it might be a group coaching program that I've got as well. So I've got a group coaching program that I do an hour a week with a group of different people. So rather than me just doing one-on-ones all the time, I've actually got, you know, I can see five, six, seven, eight, ten people all at once could kind of scale my income that as way. So just get really creative when you're going through your income schedule, review what products and services you have. And it's also a really good opportunity for you to look at, you know, the 80-20 rule. So they say that Pareto principle, um, often what's said is that 80% of your income will come from 20% of your products or services, or 80% of your headaches are going to come from 20% of your, you know, 20% of your client, you know, 80% of your clients might be the headaches where you've got that sweet spot where you've got that 20% of the clients that are really good. So it really gives you an opportunity doing the income schedule to just review your products and services, see which ones are most profitable, which ones you most enjoy doing, um, and then keeping those on there. Oh, did I just skip? Oh, no, I've got passion and purpose. That's right. I've got passion and purpose, freedom number, income schedule. Now is developing your profit plan. So this is AKA a budget. So once you've got your income schedule and you should have in the freedom number kind of really looked at your expenses, you then map this out over a 12 month period of time. So for example, um, you might say that your income schedule, this is what you dream is what you'd like to get to. This is my aspirational, but you know, for example, that, you know, you, for example, I might be um, creating a new product, but I might not be launching it to February next year. So for July through to February, my income may not be at the same level as, I'm, as it will be when I launch that new product in February. Plus my expenses might change as well. If I'm doing some more advertising or marketing or need to invest in more team members to help me launch that product. So by putting it into that 12 month profit plan, it really helps you to map out what you'd like to achieve for the year. And just really looking at each month. Also, you might have a seasonal business, for example. So as an accountant, when we had the accounting firm, December, like July through to December were bumper months. Like we were solid, packed out, you know, running off our feet, getting everything, all the work done. January and half of February generally was pretty quiet. And then at the end of May and June to early July was relatively quiet as well. So when I kind of mapped that out for my accounting firm and looked at my income and the fluctuations, I could then look at different strategies that I could implement to try and grow my income in those months where I knew we were going to have those drops. So just creating that 12 month profit plan really helps you to see the trends in your business, helps you to look at what you could do in certain months that might be quieter and helps you really start preparing um, and really helps. This is one of the key things that really helps you to flick that switch on your business and to see everything clearly. So it's a detailed projection for the business with income and expenses over a 12 month period. And if you are using QuickBooks, Myob or Excel, you can import um, your 12 month profit plan into those softwares. Um, I know how to easily do it into Excel. You can actually just go to, I think it's the budget manager report. Um, and that, in that you can download a spreadsheet from that, a template, and then you can enter all your figures in there and basically just import it back into zero. And then on a monthly basis, you can look at your budget variance report. And that kind of gives you what you actually achieved and what your goals were with your profit plan. And then you can analyze what's going on and tweak things if you need it. So it's a really key report that I highly recommend all of my clients and everyone in business that looks at on a monthly basis, the budget variance report, my open QuickBooks, it might be called something different. Um, than that. Okay, so if you, I just mentioned that if you're creating new products or services, the income schedule that you created in the, the what is it, the third step, I think it was, might be a little bit different to your profit plan because you might not actually be implementing some of those products or services till later in the year. So the profit plan doesn't have to 100% agree with the income schedule, but doing the income schedule really looks at how, you know, like that aspiration, like what your business could actually achieve. Um, and the really great step to do when you're doing the expense schedule in as part of the profit plan is really doing a deep dive and reviewing your business outgoings. Uh, I find in businesses often expenses can easily creep into a business, especially subscriptions. There's something that often will kind of start creeping in and you'll sign up for something and it's getting direct debited off your credit card every month and you forget about it. And you realize like, if you don't do often do a review of your expenses, it can kind of be 12 months, two years can kind of go past before you actually sit down and look at it and be like, what is that even that I'm spending $50 a month on or $20 a month or even $5 a month? It all adds up. Um, and I've also got a process called the money leak audit that you should do on your business every single month. Um, I did this in my accounting firm and I 
I hate to say it, that we hadn't done this process for a very long time. And we finally was working with a coach and they got me to sit down and do the money leak audit. And we saved ourselves $60,000 in one year. That was a whole employee in my business. Well, that was profit basically in my pocket because the money, like that's literally cash in your pocket. It's not kind of um, just profit. It's actual cash that you're saving there. So $60,000, who could do with an extra $60,000 in their cash at the end of the year? One of my clients, the um, one of the key things he said have been working with me over this past 12 months, it's really helped him to analyze where he's spending money in his business. And over this past 12 months, he saved like $40,000. And this coming financial year, he was on target to save another 20,000 just by looking creatively at different things and seeing that he had um, extra office space that he could rent out. His old telephone and internet system and everything was really expensive. So he, he kind of reviewed that. He was using yellow pages and he was like, the only clients or customers I get from yellow pages are tire kickers and just waste my time, my team's time. So he finally canceled that. So, so many things that, um, yeah, you just kind of creep into the business. And if you don't do that process and ongoing, um, things can happen. But if you do do it regularly, you really can start to track and see how you're spending money in your business and what the return on investment of all those different expenses or outgoings are. So really important there to do that process. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, really great way to ensure that you're not incurring any unnecessary business expenses. What can happen with expenses? You know, as your income creeps up, often your expenses kind of creep up in line with your income and often income can drop suddenly. Like we looked at, you know, COVID over the last few years, you know, a lot of the cafes, for example, that had to shut their doors, all of a sudden their expenses drop dramatically, but expenses can take a lot longer to reduce than, than income can drop. So being really mindful of those expenses and making sure you've got a plan in place to keep them in check every month is super, super important. Okay, so the magic in the review, reset and realign to live your profit plan. So this is by actually entering it into your accounting software and reviewing that budget variance report on a monthly basis and reviewing everything um, and making sure everything's in line. Like I don't, I'm actually about to do a podcast episode called Go Are Your Goals Killing Your Dreams? And what I mean by that is often you'll set these goals that are so, so big. And I, and myself personally and a couple of people I've talked to recently are saying that their goals are just really demoralizing them. They've set these huge goals and now that they're not achieving them, it's actually like it can be a bit like a deer in the headlights. You get so, so frozen because you're like, oh, what's not working? Why can't I do this? Why can't I achieve this goal? Um, and all of a sudden your dreams that, you know, you've got this big dream to achieve and all of a sudden you're not taking the action anymore because you're frozen because your goals are actually killing those dreams. So doing the review, reset and realign can really help you. Exactly. I, I totally agree, Sally. And that's exactly what I was going to share in this podcast because I think sometimes, yes, it's good to have dreams and goals that push you and help aspire you to achieve more. But if they're going to actually demoralize you, then it's probably having the adverse effect. So doing this monthly review, reset and realign, you can actually look at what you set yourself and then look at what you've actually achieved and compare them and then really start to ask yourself some questions like, okay, is my income in line with what I'd um, anticipated, like what my goal was? If it's not, then start asking yourself, well, why isn't it? You know, maybe a product that you were going to launch, um, you weren't able to get done in time and you've postponed that. Or maybe um, <clears throat> you went away on holidays or you had a staff member was sick or something like that. So or, you know, because I know one of my clients, one of her biggest issue is staff members. So um, often they're going to call in sick or they're going to give a last minute, say they're going to do something and all of a sudden they have to cancel all these shifts and the shifts are what make them money. Um, so all of a sudden like $5,000 a week they're losing because of staff calling in sick or cancelling shifts or whatever else. So um, really important to kind of make sure that you understand what's going on and then resetting and realigning things. And by doing this review, you really get to analyze your business and see what's happening. And, and it really gives you that confidence. So this is the most important pillar. It creates the magic of living your profit plan. So you don't want to just create this budget, let it go off into cyberspace, never to be looked at again, just collecting cyber dust. You actually want this to become a living, breathing document that you review on a monthly basis. And it's not set in stone either. So if you realize that maybe you set your goals too high and your income levels too high, um, you can go back and adjust it. So no one's saying that if you set your budget at this level, um, that you have to stick to that. But also understanding what the numbers are behind the numbers. So for example, if you said, I want to achieve $10,000 this month in sales, um, and I sell something that's $1,000, I need to sell 10, 10 of them to hit my 10,000 goal. 
Now, if you know to reach that goal, you need to speak to 50 people. Um, you need to make sure that you're tracking how many calls you're making or how many conversations you're having that month. And if you throughout the month, you realize that you're only having 20 and you've only got one week, you know, you've still got 30 people to speak to in the next week. So it can really help to set your targets and your KPIs and what you're trying to achieve. Um, and then to get those 50 people on a phone call with you, maybe you need to have 200 leads. So how can you get those 200 leads? And the other day I heard this really great saying is that you can't hold people accountable for the results, but you can hold people accountable for the actions they're taking. So if you've got a team member that their KPI is to get 50 phone calls for you, um, and they're not achieving that goal, you go back and say, okay, well, you need to speak to 200 people. You need to get 200 people through the funnel to get that goal of 50 people on the call with me. So you can go back and actually say, well, what actions are you taking to get those 200 people through the funnel? And then you can tweak their actions, review what they're doing and actually um, make it so it's realistic and achievable for them and hold them accountable to those actual actions. So if they're one of the actions was they had to pick up the phone and call 10 people a day that they had on the list and they're only calling five people, then you can go back to them and hold them accountable for that. You know, I said you had to achieve 10 phone calls a day. You're only doing five. What's happening? What's going on? Do we need to tweak things? And then you can really look at the person's activity rather than holding them accountable just for the results. So that's really important for business leadership as well. And then what you measure, you can improve. So when you know what you want to measure in your business and you know what the key numbers are and you can start measuring that, you can really start to improve it. And it's interesting this year, I've started to measure like my database growth, my Facebook friends, uh, my Facebook group, um, number of people in that, my podcast listens. And it's really interesting looking at over month by month by month and seeing what's happening. And then when you see like some peaks and then some troughs, you can really start to analyze the numbers and say, well, you know, July, my podcast had 100 listens and then August, it dropped down to 20. What happened in July? Can I replicate that and do it again to make sure those podcast listens are going back up? So really analyzing those numbers, you can kind of get to understand what's happening behind it. So it can really give you some guidance and some clarity around what's going on in your business. And as I said at the beginning, numbers never lie. Okay, so confident leads to empowerment. So confidence, this was probably the biggest key sorry my dog's gonna go crazy I've got a border collie so if you can hear her sorry um confidence really was the key for me taking action in my own business stepping up to be that confident business leader and doing what I needed to do to achieve the results I wanted to achieve so confidence for you is so important in your business as well so when you've got that passion and purpose and you've got the understanding of your numbers and what's going on and, and what you're trying to achieve, it then leads to that confidence. So if you're at a networking event and someone says to you, you know, how, how well is your business going? You know exactly how well your business is going and you can confidently share with that other business person. But on the flip side, if you go to that networking event and people start talking about the profit of their business and what's happening and all this, and you've got really no idea, it can really give you that kind of funny, uneasy feeling and not confident. So understanding the numbers in your business leads to confidence. Um, other key things are listening to podcasts, getting a business coach or consultant to help you. Um, going to networking events and starting to meet other business owners and collaborating with them and, and connecting. And I know when I had the accounting firm and I was really struggling um, and we'd gone into partnership with those guys and all of a sudden we had all this debt, I was so alone and I, I felt so ashamed of what had happened. But when I actually got out and started networking and meeting other business owners and hearing other people's stories, all of a sudden I didn't feel so bad and my confidence started to grow. And that was really key. I also joined an organization called Toastmasters um, to give me confidence to speak in public and become that better leader. Um, if you haven't heard of Toastmasters, definitely look it up. It's an amazing organization um, to help with confidence. And then also personal development. I did a lot of personal development. So um, that really helped to grow my business confidence as well. So whatever lights you up, whatever you... Um, makes you feel more confident. It might be wearing an amazing pair of shoes when you go out or a certain pair of undies that gives you lots of confidence when you've got an important business meeting on. So whatever it is for you, um, confidence can really help with that. That's awesome, Sally, joining networking groups. Um, I've actually got one as well. So if you want to come along to my meetup, I've got the first November of the month. I'm having a meetup, meet up, and it's in Molland Diner. So if you live kind of central northern end of the coast, um, come along to that one as well. So, and um, I love I love in person events. It's what lights me up. Speaking and in person events, connection, what absolutely lights me up. 
Okay, so I talked about the um, money leak audit. So it's kind of like a traffic light activity. I actually don't have this as a free resource yet. I probably should do it. Um, but basically it's just when I was talking about doing a deep dive into your, yeah, first Wednesday of the month, Michelle, um, at Perneski Artiston Distillery in Molendina. But if you're interested, just send me a message and I can send you the um, the link to book your ticket. Um, so the traffic light exercise um, is really that money leak audit. So basically I recommend people, if you are using, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, first Wednesday of November, not first November of the month, lol. <laughs> um, so the traffic light activity, if you are using accounting software program for your business, then export the general ledger. If you don't know how to export the general ledger to an Excel spreadsheet, once again, just send me an email. I can show you how to do that. Super easy. Um, and then you want to just go through line item by line item through, especially your expenses, and just see where money in your business is going out of the business. So go through that. And then anything um, that is 100% necessary for you to open the doors of your business. So you might, for example, internet, you need internet, you need your telephone bill, um, you know, you might have a computer software application that you, you have to have to run your business. So for all those things that are 100% necessary, highlight them in green. However, if you think you could get a better deal on any of them of those essential expenses, so for example, maybe you haven't reviewed your internet account lately or your telephone bill, or maybe even your insurances. So those things that you think maybe you could actually review them and get a better deal, highlight them in orange. Um, but anything else, oh, it's a bit of a shame, Sally. Uh, uh, um, anything else that's 100% necessary. So highlight them in green, but if it's something you could review and actually get a better deal, highlight in orange. And then go through all the rest of the expenses and ask yourself the three questions. So one, is this business helping me to create more profit? Oh, sorry, is this expense, business expense, helping me to create more profit? Is this business expense helping me to save money? Or is this business expense helping me to save time? So they're the three questions you want to ask. And as you go through those expenses, really ask yourself and analyze those expenses. Anything that is a, a no to all three of those is red. And you want to cancel them as quickly as possible. Anything that you're not really sure about or you know, you're wanting to just review it for a little bit longer or you think you could get a better deal, highlight them in orange. Um, and anything that, are like, yes, 100%, it's helping me to save time, it's helping me to save money or it's helping to make more profit, highlight those in green and they're the things you keep. And by doing this on a regular basis, every single month, I recommend, you really get to see where you're spending your money and you can understand if you're spending too much money in a certain area or you're not getting a return on investment. So maybe you spent... Um, $2,000 this past month on Facebook ads, um, but you realize that all the leads you're getting from the Facebook ads weren't quite your ideal client. And in reviewing that, you actually realize that maybe your ideal client's hanging out on LinkedIn and it'd be better for you to invest in a LinkedIn strategy than it is on Facebook. Then may, that really helps you to analyze where you're spending your money and that return on investment. So really important activity to do that one. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. Did anyone have any questions before? Um, I'd throw it back over to Michelle. No? Okay, so you can find, I'm sure Michelle will probably share. You're welcome, Sally. So, oh, this is how you can connect with me if you want to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, Sally's already jumped over to my website and I do have the um, Profit to Cash podcast. So feel free to um connect with me anywhere and, and I love getting messages from people so please send me a message if you've got any questions thank you Michelle thank you so much Phoebe that was absolutely awesome that was really so valuable um yeah You're really welcome. really great tips there yep I'm going to head over and, and download some of those uh tips as well so there's um lots of um golden nuggets in there i love the traffic light um thing and also having that budget going into um zero i've got a budgeting excel tool and that sort of stuff but yeah putting it into um yeah into zero the, the easier we can make it i think the easier we yeah. stick to it and that's really and important. zero is really great too if you do use zero when you're looking at that budget variance report it actually has like a little um, green or red arrow next to the number so it really will highlight to you if you're over or above like uh, above or below what your target was mm -hmm. um so yeah and it really high especially when you're looking at the expenses <clears throat> excuse me like if you see a red flag yeah definitely like click on um 
you know, the actual expense thing. It was, I think it's like normally in blue. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I got a bit of a perky throat. And then that'll take you into actually what is in, like what makes up that expense. And um, yeah. you can really see where you've spent money that month and that expense if it's a bit higher than normal. Yeah, yeah. And I love <laughs> that uh, also the um, what the subscriptions. I did that exercise a couple of weeks ago. And I found that, um, so I now use Calendly, but I was using a different app. I can't remember which one it was now. Um, and I still had the, that billing set up yearly. And so I had paid two years so about 130 wow. bucks per year or something like that, um, but I hadn't even used it. And um, yes. there's a couple of other things as well of things that I'm just like, I don't need that anymore. And I ended up saving about 500 bucks and that was just a 10 minute exercise by finding yeah. just a couple of things. And that's, those leakages are just so important. So, and you yeah. think that like Michelle, you could put that $500 into an investment mm -hmm. and turn it into more money for yourself. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or spend it on other business, um, things that will make you more money with that traffic light system. And that sort of exactly. Stuff. Fantastic. <coughs> All righty. So um, I don't know, Leanne, if you can pop the links for Phoebe in the chat. Um, actually, we're going to do the, yeah, the, the spinning wheel. All right. So Phoebe, if you'd like to tell everybody what uh, your lucky door prize was. So my lucky door prize is a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour session with me. Um, we can do it to review your profit plan and go through that um, in detail and really help to um, clearly map that out for you. And then, and I can also assist you to get it into your accounting software or just whatever you'd like to use the session for. So it's just a one hour um, session with me, I think, or did I put two hours? I can't remember, Leanne. I think it was one. Uh, one, yep. Yeah, one hour session with me. Cool. <clears throat> All right, Leanne, are you able to do the lucky spinning wheel? Okay, you guys ready? Uh, yeah. This one is for uh, Phoebe Dre's uh, lucky yep. door prize first. Okay, I'm going to spin the wheel. Michaela, congratulations. Yay, well done. Now uh, we're going to spin another for uh, Michelle's uh, Lucky Door Prize. So we're going, I'm going to be doing either one of two things. So depending on what people's circumstances are, um, so we'll, I'll, I'll initially book in a 15-minute chat with you and decide which one is going to be um, the right one for you because you may not qualify for one or the other. Um, so I can do a 30-minute um, Sacred Money Archetype personality assessment, so where I will do the assessment and find out what your money personality type is yeah. and how you can um, focus on the strengths of that um, and strengthen up the, the more challenging aspects um, as well, because there's nine different... Michelle, can I enter it? Can I be... <laughs> oh, <what's> that? <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Okay. Thank you. I'd love to win that, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is so insightful. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you've been accumulator um, combined with, I reckon, a maverick. So an inner rebel within an accumulator. And what happens is your accumulator, for example, um, is all about the numbers and all that sort of stuff and, and you love saving and watching the numbers grow. And then the other types can actually then challenge that. And yeah, it's just so, it's so insightful. So yeah, so the uh, money archetypes assessment um, and in that chat, if somebody does have over a hundred thousand in their superannuation, um, I can offer a money free, uh, sorry, a 60 minute worry free retirement um, audit. Okay. So I'll offer both. Alrighty, let's ready. Go. You guys ready? Yep. Spinning. Oh, congratulations, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you can't rig this thing just because you said you want to go and it didn't say you're going to win it. <laughs> congratulations, everyone. <laughs> Where's she gone? Oh, did she see? Oh. You won, Phoebes. 
<laughs> Yay! Thank you. <laughs> I manifested it. <laughs> all right well thank you ladies for giving up an hour of your time here um investing uh, an hour of your time here and learning so much from phoebe um thank you phoebe for for putting in that time to teach everybody these super valuable tools um i know i certainly got lots out of it so i'm sure the other ladies did as well um anybody who isn't uh, part of the female financial freedom group hop over on facebook and uh, join us there's lots of other free guides in there such as we've got the master class how to bust through the glass income ceiling recording we've got how to have a worry-free retirement or um recording we have got uh, a pdf of master class how to master the three pillars of female financial freedom they are all free tools both on my website and in the group so jump on over if you're not already a member what a beautiful group of, um, of women over there and i will be posting the next event in the next couple of days okay so everybody have an absolutely uh amazing rest of your day amazing weekend coming up and amazing uh, rest of the year christmas is nearly here it's can't, can't believe that fast the, the year has gone it's just like holy heck all right well enjoy your the rest of your day everybody and i look forward to um speaking to you all shortly and phoebe i will send you a booking link and we'll have a chat thank you michelle thank you everyone nice all to right. meet you all bye thank you bye